Ben McWilliam from the University of Alabama. I am going to talk to you today about tele-intervention and the routines-based model. I have written a blog about this, which you can find at naturalenvironments.blogspot.com. These are interesting times for us, um, but not so scary if you have been using the routines-based model or a similar model. The routines-based model is primarily one that focuses on building families' capacities and other caregivers' capacity to enhance the child's meaningful participation in everyday life. So much of the visit in face-to-face -face, uh, life uh, has to do with working collaboratively with caregivers, parents, teachers, and other caregivers of the child. Because this interaction is largely with adults, when we have to move to uh, a virtual home visit because families are staying at home, the change is really not all that different. In fact, this uh, situation, which is not pleasant for anybody to be trapped in uh, the home, is actually demonstrating the power of working with families to enhance their children's engagement in everyday routines and it makes intervention uh, much more relevant. In fact, since children spend most of their time with families anyway, even when we do have face-to-face -face visits, we can see that we have always believed that working with families to help them be able to get their children engaged, independent, and in social relationships in their everyday activities is the way to go. So I'm going to discuss today how the principles of the routines-based model match the demands of distance service delivery. Uh, I do encourage you to go to uh, EIEIO. Um, let me just get my laser here. Uh, at www.eieio.ua.edu, where you will find many uh, resources. The principles of the routines-based model. First, all the intervention occurs between visits. Not during visits, but between visits. That's where it is that children are learning. And if that's the case, then uh, what do we do during visits? What we do during visits is we help the families have all the information and support that they need to be able to intervene or parent their child. So visits build the family's capacity to meet child and family needs. And so in the tele-intervention visit, we're still going to be doing that, uh, that emphasis on building family's capacity. Another principle of the routines-based model is that the family sets the agenda. The professional does not prepare uh, for what they think we should talk about at the next visit. Uh, you will see some more details about that as we go along. The next steps form, which I'll show you later, is virtually completed and reviewed during visits. That is, we can um, ask the family what it is that they intend to do in the coming week and what they would like the focus of the next visit to be on. And then at the beginning of the next virtual visit, we review that. Family sets the agenda. Another principle is that parents are competent adults. So uh, understanding that that uh, is true, we then in a virtual world collaborate to determine interventions that parents will carry out. We do not give families homework. We work with them to help them decide what it is that they want to be able to do with their child. And of course, we give them ideas uh, once we have enough context. Another principle of the RBM is that we, uh, that family consultation is how we work with families. Family consultation is collaborative consultation, but with families. So we ask many questions to help families arrive at solutions that they want to implement. We ask many questions before we make a suggestion so that our suggestions are relevant for the family. Another principle of the, of the model is the two bucket principle. This principle says that a mother or father or other caregiver can only fill her child's bucket to the extent that her bucket is full. 
That is to say that we need to ensure that caregivers of children have the information, support, resources that they need so that then they have the energy, information and resources to be able to help their child. So the visit, the virtual visit, includes discussion of family outcomes and goals and other family needs. In this family-centered approach, the routines-based model, we are concerned about uh, helping all members of the family understanding that a family is like a child's mobile, that you tug on one element of the mobile and all the other elements uh, move with it. Families are, um, uh, are a system that is interdependent on each other. The, the uh, last principle I want to mention is that we provide support-based visits. Uh, this has been true in a face-to-face -face, uh, world and is also true in a virtual world. And so in, our visits are designed to provide emotional support for families and ensure that they have emotional support from their own networks, to provide material support to families, that is, information about how they can have access to the things that they need to be able to uh, run their lives the way they want to, and Im importantly, that they have informational support. So these three types of support, emotional, material, and informational support, are essential at every visit, and we can provide those uh, when we're using tele-intervention. I don't need to tell you uh, about all the technological requirements for doing tele-intervention because there are many, many resources out there now in the past two to three weeks telling people what they need in terms of uh, Wi-Fi, enough bandwidth, the right kind of technology, etc. So I'm more or less going to skip over that other than to tell you that um, the most commonly tele-intervention visits will be via video conferencing so with some kind of camera involved. Uh, it can be by phone, and this has become a very important issue because we understand that for reasons of equity, we cannot have early intervention that can only go to people who have their own personal Wi-Fi, because there are some families who do not have that. So in this spirit, there are organizations and states scrambling to provide Wi-Fi to all families, such as by providing them with hotspots that they can use through their cellular connections and so forth. So video conferencing does have pros and cons for different families. Um, and uh, in a study by Olson et al. in 2012, we found that uh, w what they did was they had families rate the um, ease with which they were able to do, I think it's seven um, practices and uh, they were turning on the computer, connecting the camera and microphone, connecting to the internet, connecting to the um, project website, the platform that was used for, uh, connect for the uh, visit, um, logging onto the website, starting the camera, and locking the microphone to talk. Some of these uh, sound a little uh, dated to me, but the uh, point was that families, uh, by and large, were fairly comfortable once they had good directions at the beginning and uh, remained comfortable throughout the um, course of the study. The, uh, as I said earlier, I'm not going to go into the details of all of these um, issues. I really want to talk about how the routines-based model can be used successfully via teleconference. The, uh, one of the first elements of the routines-based model is the routines-based interview for assessing needs. And Cami Stevenson and I will be doing um, a webinar on this hosted by uh, CEC and DEC um, in a couple of weeks. So the RBI is essential and it includes ecomap development. So that is uh, drawing the picture of the family's ecology, including especially importantly their informal supports. And this can be done by uh, just asking the family questions. The professional will draw the eco-map and then use technology to show the family the uh, eco-map, such as by scanning it and sending a copy to the family. Uh, scanning uh, can be used with various types of software on telephones, or it can be simply a picture that is then sent to the family. So obviously we have to have, in addition to the teleconference, 
connection, we have to have some kind of connection with the family via text or um, email or some other uh, system like that, um, Facebook Messenger, whatever. Uh, that actually, those um, other methods of connection are important for setting up the visit. I do want to say that I have seen some guidances around televisits that to me sound much too prescriptive for working with families. Our visits should be um, a gentle intrusion into the family's life because they want us to be there because we're helpful to them. It is not that the family has to bend over backwards to accommodate our visits through technology. So uh, ensure that the um, setup for the visits is uh, gentle and kind and sensitive to the fact that families are stuck together in their homes and um, some families are feeling isolated and some families are feeling that there's too much intrusion in their lives. So we need to be really sensitive not to make it that the families have to bend to us, but that we accommodate the families' uh, schedules. So the Ecomap is the first part of the RBI. Um, then we get into the interview itself about uh, the child's engagement, independence and social relationships in the different routines of the day. This happens in face-to-face -face as a conversation, so there's no reason it cannot happen uh, through a computer. And uh, the procedures for doing an RBI uh, basically are that we go through the family's day uh, at each time of the day or routine, we find out what everyone else is doing, what the child is doing, the child's engagement, child's uh, independence, the child's social relationships, and then how satisfied the family is with that time of the day. And we proceed that way through the interview. Um, towards the end of the interview, we do ask the family uh, the time, worry, and change questions, which are, do you have enough time for yourself or yourself and another person? When you lie awake at night worrying, what do you worry about? And if there's anything you could change in your life, what would, what would you change? And those questions still get asked because just because we're doing it over a computer that doesn't really uh, make any difference. It's very important, uh, in my opinion, to have the camera on the um, interventionist and the family so that you can, um, to some extent, read affect uh, in both people. And it's very important for the family to be able to see the affect in their interviewer. Um, then the uh, interviewer recaps the conversation. Now the notes can be taken by hand or they can be taken on the computer. Uh, usually in face-to-face -face, computer taken notes don't work all that well uh, because um, it's a lot to handle when you're um, uh, to keep up with well-written notes and to keep the conversation going. Um, it's a little easier from a distance to do that so people have a choice of taking their notes either way. In the recap, they uh, need to show their notes to the family. So again, we either have to use scanning or pictures for the family, or we um, share our screen, uh, or, or some combination of the two, because you can actually capture um, the uh, image of your notes and share the screen from that image. So the point is that the family needs to be able to see the notes during the recap because they're going to revisit the notes a little bit later on. Um, after the recap, uh, the family then chooses, uh, there's the recap, and they decide what their goals are going to be. At this point, at the beginning, that we just ask them what goals they want and uh, the professional starts writing down what the family wants and maybe asking for um, a little bit of clarification to make sure that these informal goals have enough, uh, that we have enough information about these informal goals to know what the family really wants. Um, if, the, if the family has chosen fewer than 10, which is usually true, uh, we then um, hand over our notes to the family. So in a virtual way, this would be making sure that the family had um, could see the images of the handwritten notes or could see the, um, the typed notes through shared screen or through a copy, some other um, method of sending a copy, such as um, saving a document of the notes and sending it to the family so they can look through it. 
Uh, now, the um, uh, important thing here is that the family should be able to see these notes and add additional goals that they hadn't thought about, goals or outcomes, um, and then the professional and the family together should be able to look at, at the notes. Each person can have his or her own copy, um, or sh with a shared screen, they can both see uh, these notes. So that we end up with 10 to 12 functional child, 10 to 12 outcomes or goals, some of which are uh, functional child goals and some of which are family goals. Now, then we get into visits. Um, and uh, um, in my blog, I have my blog post, I have described the difference between synchronous versus asynchronous visits. And um, I will say that most people are talking about only synchronous visits. Uh, that is real time visits, which are um, ideal. Uh, but it is also possible to have asynchronous visits, which is basically the professional providing some um, ideas and um, feedback, perhaps, on, on material that the family has sent, such as video uh, or questions by email or what have you. Um, and so I don't want us to lose track of the possibility that sometimes asynchronous visits might also uh, be an option. I have also already mentioned that the agenda for the visits, and I'm now talking about synchronous visits, uh, should be uh, set by the family and with the family's um, priorities in mind. Uh, the focus of, of the visit um, is determined at, uh, as part of the next steps form, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then we review interventions that the family said that they were going to carry out. Uh, this review of the interventions uh, that they were going to do, the um, ways to help the child be engaged, uh, can involve some action, such as they could show you um, over the, um, with the camera uh, what the child is doing. Uh, they could also show you what they have been doing to help the child. Often we have to remind the family that the, the positioning of their camera should be um, often capturing both child and caregiver, not just uh, the child. Um, the uh, development of strategies with families has always involved a lot of talking, uh, questions by the professional, and the t uh, once the professional has enough context, understands what the family wants, understands what the child has been doing, what the caregiver has been doing, etc., then they um, uh, stick the landing, as Cammie Stevenson always calls it. And so that is actually comes up with a um, specific uh, suggestion for the family. And then they talk about whether that's going to be feasible, whether the family likes that idea, and um, if not, they move on to uh, another one. So that still can all happen through telecommunication. Um, and then the uh, visit needs to conclude with a plan for the next visit. Uh, because we are working with 10 to 12 outcomes or goals, we uh, use the matrix to remind the family of the goals that they have chosen um, so in case they want to focus on certain ones that maybe we haven't talked about in a while. This is a, uh, an example of the matrix. Um, and uh, you can see that we have the uh, goals or outcomes down the left-hand side, routines across the right. Um, it, the X's are the routines in which the uh, functional child goal is targeted for. So in this one, which is acknowledging people when they greet Jamal, uh, the family had uh, and the early interventionists had thought that this would be important at waking up time, hanging out time, and outside time, for example. So you can see how uh, each of the goals has the routines that, is that uh, it is targeted for. Um, some of these goals don't have any routines here, and because they are the family goals, which are not routine-bound. So this is Shamika will get information about inclusive preschool options. That is um, her... Uh, outcome number seven. By the way, uh, at the end of the RBI, once families have chosen their goals, they put them into priority order of importance, and then we always keep that, that order 
when we list out the goals. So uh, their most important one was um, for uh, Jamal to um, acknowledge people when they greet him. Um, and uh, you can see that their goals go all the way down to Shamika exploring going back to work. Uh, and again, that has no, um, no routines because it's a family level goal. Um, and here is the next steps form. Uh, this is a very important form for us. Um, other models have similar forms. This, uh, for us, what we have on the left-hand panel is what we did today and progress on any goals discussed. In the right-hand panel, what we will do from now until the next visit, we being the caregiver, but it could also be the early interventionist. And the plan for the next visit is down at the bottom. And what we often do um, is show the family the matrix to remind them of all of the goals that they have chosen for their child and family uh, when they are thinking about what the plan for the next visit should be. So the next steps form is used for documentation of the visit. It is a reminder of the commitment that uh, the adults involved have made uh, about what's going to happen between visits. Remember, all the intervention occurs between visits. And it is the agenda for the next visit. The agenda for the next visit will be the plan for the next visit on the bottom panel, but it will also be a review of what we did in the past week or since the previous visit. Again, I want to ask the question, who sets the agenda? It is the family that sets the agenda in our model. So to revisit the principles then, all the intervention occurs between visits, family sets the agenda, parents are competent adults, and so we work with them uh, as partners in this process. They are not children. We use adult learning theory. We do not use pedagogy. Family consultation is how we work with families, and so that is a collaborative consultation approach, not an expert consultation approach. We don't go in there giving parents suggestions and expecting them to follow through. We go in there working with them to figure out what it is that's going to work for them and what they consider to be um, likely to succeed and feasible in their busy lives. We uh, follow the two bucket principle, which is to ensure that uh, families are getting uh, the resources and supports that they need to build themselves up as individuals, which then makes them more um, rested, prepared and confident as parents of their children. And we provide support based visits focusing on emotional support, material support and informational support. So I encourage you, please, to visit uh, www.eieio.ua.edu, where we have many materials and other information. And uh, please do write to us at eieio at ua.edu. And you can write to us in Spanish or English, and we will reply uh, quickly. So thank you for uh, letting me talk to you today about how tele-intervention and the routines-based model are natural partners, and I wish you luck in um, supporting families. Thank you very much.